explain to them about the hijab mm -hmm. and why we wear it. It's, you know, some sisters may respond with, it's hotter than hell, but that has no significance to someone who doesn't know anything about Islam or the reason why Muslim women should cover. And of course, polygyny. So when I explain to them the purpose and the beauty of polygyny, although it's, you know, kind of difficult and trying for Muslim women and men, once I explain it to them, they they understand it. And, and do you find the that there are many women who are accepting Islam? Yes, there are a lot of women that are accepting Islam. And alhamdulillah, they're also actually seeing how beautiful the hijab is. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, back in, I would say 1997, at one time, I didn't wear the Jill bath every day. I may have worn a suit, uh, mm. a long sh shirt with pants. And I was working in a public school in Delaware. And all of the women, they were fascinated when I would wear Jill babs because it was different and they thought it was beautiful. And one day I wore a suit and they said, oh, you're just like us. Mm -hmm. All you have on is a scarf. And from that point on, I said, okay, no more suits. Mm -hmm. They said, actually, you look more beautiful when you wear the long flowing dresses. Mm -hmm. So I would say the first two questions are, aren't you hot with all of that on? The women here in the West think we're oppressed mm -hmm. because we're wearing, because a lot of the women, they choose to wear black. Mm -hmm. They choose to cover their hands and their face faces and their feet, mm -hmm. which is the best way to dress. Mm -hmm. So when the non-Muslim women see them, they think we're oppressed, but by far we're oppressed. Okay. Brother Jihad, I just want to ask you that uh, the, in Islam, you know, the Muslim man is given a responsibility to take care of his family. So I want to ask you how you see that the Muslim men here in America are living up to that responsibility of taking care of their families. Well. Without a doubt, you know, the responsibility of taking care of the family truly lies upon the man. And it's a tremendous responsibility that the man has. So you have many brothers like myself who may work one, two, three jobs and at the same time trying to manage your family and on top of that trying to go back to school, go back to college or whatever it may be. So it's a very tremendous job that the Muslim man has to do when it comes to taking care of his family. Mm -hmm. And uh, people getting married, you know, marriages is something which are, are very dynamic, you know, and very important in Islam, and it's very important to get married and stay married. So to people, Muslims, Muslim yes. men who are looking to get married here, what are some of the important things they should consider in, in, in choosing a wife or a wife choosing a husband okay. to, to kind of have a better start in having a good relationship? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because we, my wife and myself, we had this conversation uh, the other day that it's really important for the man uh, to marry a woman for the specific reason of her religion because uh, like our Prophet Muhammad, like our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a woman is married for four reasons but if you marry her for the religion this is the best reason, this is the best reason to marry the woman because these other things, the beauty will go away as you, she gets older, the social status will go away, and if she has any wealth, wealth will go away. But if you marry for the religion, the religion, if she's a good, sound, practicing uh, Muslima, mm -hmm. then you have a jewel. Mm -hmm. This is what you have. You have a jewel. So it could be said that a lot of the unsuccessful marriages are the people who are marrying for the other reasons. Yes, w without a doubt, without a doubt. And, you know, if I can just piggyback on something that you asked uh, my wife, uh, when we look at a lot of our youth, I think it's important that we try to gear our youth to get married at a young age because there are many peer pressures that they do face here, not just in America, but I'm, I'm more than sure in Saudi Arabia yeah. or in London, mm -hmm. but preferably here in America because you can turn on the TV at any given time and there is a naked woman on TV or there is a naked man. So it's very very rough mm -hmm. on a man as well as a woman. Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of dawah and, 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 and presenting Islam to people who are not Muslims, how do you deal with the, the misinformation and the biggest misconception that Islam is an extremist religion or religion which promotes terrorism and these evil actions? Mm, very interesting. Um, one of the ways and the forms that we give, we, that we try to give dawah here at the United Muslim Masjid in Philadelphia, we use the outlet of our radio show that that you were blessed to be at uh, yesterday. Uh, we also are beginning to do something very, I don't want to say different, but uh, something that uh, many of the, that the other religions are doing as far as going out in the street 
and propagating what Islam is, telling people that, no, we're not terrorists. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are defenders of peace because if we study the history of Islam, Islam never told us to put a bomb on us and, and blow up things and innocent children and, and innocent people are dying and these people are using the name of Islam for these things. This is, to this is totally wrong. For instance, tonight, uh, two weeks ago, we had an invitation from one of the local churches in South Philly. Mm -hmm. And they asked us to come talk about what is Islam. Mm -hmm. Now, we wanted to use that as a, as a tool to be able to not go there and tell them, okay, you're all going to hell because, you know, you did not accept Muhammad as the last messenger. Mm -hmm. But, in fact, we're going to them and we're preaching to them what the religion is. Mm -hmm. This big misconception of us being terrorists. This is the biggest thing, mm -hmm. the biggest thing with... Uh, with the media that's portraying us as Muslims to be terrorists. So we're using this tonight to go to the church and explain to them this is the religion of Islam. This is what we are and this is what we're not. And let me ask you just one uh, final question to wrap up. Here in the city of Philadelphia, there's a large concentration of Muslims. Do you think for the non-Muslims of Philadelphia living in close proximity to Muslims, they understand better about Muslims and Islam than people in other cities might? Yes, yes. I'm, 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 I'm more than sure. Because if you go in, for instance, if you take South Philly alone, you can walk any given corner or any block in the city mm -hmm. of Philadelphia, yeah. of South Philly, and somebody on that block is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Or somebody in that family is a Muslim. Whereas though if you take little small towns in, in Pennsylvania, maybe like a Pottstown or a Norristown or Allentown, not a real big population of Muslims. A lot, Muslims there, but not like the inner city, mm -hmm. not like the inner city at all. Okay, uh, Brother Jihad and, uh, and your wife and your family, I would like to thank you for inviting us into your home. Thank you for coming. And giving our viewers a little insight of what life is like for the Muslim family in America. And inshallah, will give you success, you and your family are raising sure. a good family and all are getting together to Jannah, inshallah. inshallah. So our viewers, I hope you were able to get a glimpse into the life of the Muslim family here in America and will continue with us along on this journey of discovery of Islam in America.